You already know some Python basics like lists, loops and variables. And now want to use them to create a little game. But how do you put everything together to create a good playing experience? You know that it is possible, but the first steps are still not clear to you. In this video you learn how a game like Hangman works and then use your basic Python skills to program the game step by step. If you never created a game before, or at least did not think about it too much, the first thing you need to know is that there are different type of games. The type we are creating is known as a guessing game, where the player gets a number of attempts to guess the correct word. A guessing game usually goes something like this. The game needs to be initialized, then a number of guesses follow until the game is over, and when the game is over, typically you have won or lost. You already see that the game will have some variables, a loop to repeat the guessing attempts, and at the end a decision to show whether you have won or lost. I also need something to show the gallows and I use basic characters for this. In the description is a link to the finished code, so you don't have to type in this code yourself. But before you start typing, let me show you how it works. Here you see data.py with the gallows string. Watch what happens at the end. The string is split on empty lines and the gallows variable is actually a list of gallows. Let me show you how to use it. For this I create main.py. I import data and print the first gallows. That works. Let me show you another gallows from the list. Ok, that was step 1. Now I create a list of mystery words to guess. And pick one random mystery word. I import random. Let's see if that works. Yes, a random word from the mystery words is printed. I create a list to keep track of wrong guesses. At this point there is a list of gallows and a list of wrong guesses. I use the length of the wrong guesses list as index to get a gallows. Every time the list of wrong guesses grows, a next gallows picture will be shown. Now I create a partial solution that keeps track of correctly guessed characters. Let me show you what partial solution looks like. As you can see, the partial solution consists of underscores. Its length is the same as the mystery word. Of course, I will not show the mystery word anymore, so I delete this print statement. It's time to ask for input as long as the player has guesses left. The loop will continue as long as the number of wrong guesses is less than available gallows pictures. I ask for input and convert it to uppercase. At this point I need to check if the character is in the mystery word or not. I'm not sure yet what to do when the character is guessed correctly, but in case of a wrong guess, I add the guess to the wrong guesses list. And finally I print the gallows again. I run the program to see what happens. I enter some wrong guesses. I get an index error. The length of the wrong guesses list is now greater than available gallows. This is an easy fix. I run the program to see what happens. I enter some wrong guesses. Very nice, the program ended normally. But we need more information what is going on. After each guess I print the partial solution and the wrong guesses. I run the program again. I enter some wrong guesses. 
It works. The gallows are building up as the list of wrong guesses grows. But as you see, the incorrect character X is added multiple times. Let's be more forgiving and only add a wrong guess if it is not in the list of wrong guesses. I enter the same wrong guess a few times. Notice that the gallows are not building up each time I enter the same incorrect character. Did you notice this code? You already saw what it does in the output. Basically it takes this string and uses it to separate all elements from the wrong guesses list. The result is a string of characters separated by comma empty space. Let's have a look where we are in the process. The game was initialized and a loop was created for the guesses. There are two tasks left. Handle correct guesses and create the game over situation. In the code there is a mystery word and a partial solution. Each time a correct guess happens the character needs to be placed in the partial solution. And although this seems like a simple task for Python, it is actually not a trivial task. The mystery word has five characters. Let's say the second underscore needs to be replaced by the letter N. The string of underscores need to be split into two strings. One has a single underscore and the other has three underscores. The N will be inserted in the middle, so the resulting string has five characters again. I will use a technique called list slicing for this. Let me show you. I start by deleting this temporary code. I go through the characters of the mystery word and check if the character matches. If the character appears at this position, I update the partial solution. But how do I know at what position the partial solution should be split? I need to know at what position the character was found. This can be done by using the enumerate function in the loop. The enumerate function adds an index to each element from the mystery word. I unpack it in variable i. I can now use the index to split the partial solution at the correct position. That results in the underscores until the matching character. I add the character and the remaining partial solution. If you are not used to list slicing, this takes a while to get used to. But let me assure you that this works. I enter some characters. Wrong guesses build up the gallows and correct guesses complete the partial solution. As you notice, guessing the correct word does not end the game. The loop should be terminated when the partial solution is equal to the mystery word. And finally, the game should inform you if you have won or lost. Time to test the game. I first test losing the game. That works. Now I test winning the game. And that works as well. Very nice. With a few lines of code, you have created a fully functional hangman game. A link to the code can be found in the description. And that's all for this video. For more Python tutorials, click one of my other videos. Thanks for watching.